going on. Um, while uh, while we're we're getting started, um, he's not presenting until a little bit later in the slide. So um, let's go ahead and uh, Metro National Network. I'm going to count down 30 seconds, um, and then um, Lucy's going to give us an intro for this evening. So um, 30. 25, 20, 15, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, let's go. I feel like I'm in liftoff with a rocket ship or something. Um, well, good evening, everyone. My name is Lucy Kempf with the Planning Department, and I want to welcome you to this kickoff meeting for the East Bank. We are so excited to be here with you tonight. Um, to those residents and members of the public and civic and community leaders, we're really pleased that you're here to meet the Perkins Eastman team who is working with us to develop a new vision um, for the East Bank. You know, um, as I go about Nashville and see how much the city is evolving and thriving. Um, I understand and I hear from so many of you how important it is for us as a city to be closely connected to those features that make us unique, that are authentic to our city. And I certainly see the East Bank as being one of those areas that has access to the riverfront. That is a unique attribute to who we are. It is the birthplace in some respects of, of our community, um, our modern community. And so um, we are absolutely thrilled to be having a conversation about how we can build on that and build on the riverfront along the East Bank in a way um, that can really enrich um, our lives as residents and enrich our city. Um, because we believe that the river is a place for all residents to enjoy. And um, as a planner, one of the things that I feel really excited and passionate about is the idea of developing a cohesive and coordinated plan and an experience for people to enjoy this part of the city. And it's important to act now because we have an opportunity to shape that experience in a way that you know, perhaps doesn't exist um, in downtown or other parts of the city that have uh, built out. And so the East Bank is really an opportunity to think about the future in a way um, that expresses your goals as residents. And so the kickoff meeting is really an opportunity to listen to you and to hear your ideas and your thoughts for the property owners um, who are on the call who are doing business on the East Bank, uh, we want to hear from you. For residents who want to enjoy the river in a different way, we want to hear from you. So one of the things I love about planning, it's different from biology. We're not in a laboratory. We want to take your input, and that will help us imagine um, the steps that we, we need to take as a community um, to create a vision that's responsive, responsive to you. And so with that, um, we have a short presentation tonight. Again, we're not here to present ideas to you. We're not here to, to tell you what the plan is going to be. We're here to listen so that we can make sure that as we move the forward with our vision, that it is built on um, the express goals of, of our residents, of our business owners who, who are living and working on the East Bank today. Um, and, and the like. And so um, before handing it over to the team, I'm really excited um, that uh, Councilman Withers and Councilman Parker are here um, joining us and what better leaders to help us um, better understand and articulate the goals for this area and how we want to grow and what, what it means to, um, to be responsive to community vision in this part of the city. So Councilman Withers, I'd love to start with you and um, just uh, welcome us tonight and hope you're doing well. Nice to see you. Well, uh, thank you, Director Kempf. It's great to see you and um, appreciate everyone who's logged on. This is um, not the first time that we have talked about the future of the East Bank and East Nashville. Uh, we have a lot of uh, community members who've been really engaged for a long time, and we've looked at this a few times in the past, 
Um, and I think this will be uh, an opportunity to maybe build on some of those things in the past and look at some fresh uh, ideas and fresh uh, opportunities that we may have to really make it work this time. So uh, uh, looking forward to hearing everyone's thoughts today, uh, particularly as it pertains to the area south of James Robertson Parkway, uh, where we have a lot of exciting uh, a space that we can maybe do better things with. So I'm looking forward to hearing everyone's comments tonight and throughout the rest of this process over the rest of this year as we come to formulate a, a cohesive plan. Thank you. Spen Withers, that's a really good point. Thank you for mentioning that. We very much are standing on the shoulders of work that the Civic Design Center has done and many other folks who have committed to um, ideas for how the East Bank could evolve and um, you know, my goal is to ensure that the vision that we come up with is something that Metro can recognize as, um, you know, a place for investment and improvements and to get it into a format where we can, um, you know, take actionable change. But to your point, I totally agree where we are building on work that has been done. So thank you for saying that. Councilman Parker, how are you? It's nice to see you tonight. Thanks for joining. <clears throat> hey, I'm doing I'm doing great. Thanks for inviting me. And um, definitely thanks to everybody who's attending this evening. Um, you know, this is uh, as as Lucy Kempf made clear, there's a lot of really great opportunity in this area. Um, I'm not going to just echo everything that she said, but um, it's very exciting to have this opportunity to kind of shape the future of such a significant part of our city and of our community. Um, so I, I just really thrilled to get this process kicked off and um, and just really grateful for everybody who's joined us here. I mean, the the I think that community engagement is such a crucial piece of this project being successful. And, um, you know, based on on the last few years of working with Lucy and with um, Anna Greider, who is working on this project, and the other week I got to meet the folks from uh, Perkins Eastman, I hope I got that name right, um, who, who have joined us here for this study. And I'm just really thrilled about this team that we've got here. And I'm really thrilled about all the people in this community who I know are gonna be engaged through the process. And I'm really, really hopeful that we're gonna get to all be in a room together or maybe have some hybrid events or something at some point, because um, it's just so much easier to, to you know, vision and point at maps and, and share ideas um, when we can do that. So <clears throat> I do hope that we're able to get there, but um, I'm glad we're getting things rolling here. And again, thanks everybody for joining us this evening and um, I'll, I'll turn it back over to the team. I just wanna, before handing it over to Anna, I want to acknowledge um, the exceptional support and visioning from the mayor and the mayor's office um, team who I think bring an interdisciplinary um, approach and vision and, and their support of sort of the, the work that we need to do here. And so we're, we're honored um, to be working closely with them. And also, you know, the kinds of, of questions that we want to grapple with with the East Bank study does require an interdisciplinary approach. And so we're gonna be working closely with other departments, including the DOT and parks and others to help us make sure that we are thinking holistically about the very best of the design and professional standards that are necessary to help this area be successful and a credit to our city. And so I wanna thank, um, in addition to the mayor's office, the, the other departments who I think will be very strong collaborators and partners in this effort. So with that, Anna, did I miss anything? Are there any rules you want me to talk about or can I hand it over to you? Um, I think you can hand it over and I'll, I'll get the rule book out. But thank you, Lucy, and thank you, council Don't members. Don't do that, no rules. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm Anna Greider with the Metro Planning Department, and I have the joy to project manage this East Bank study. Um, as part of that uh, role, I get to talk about um, a lot of logistical things. So I'm going to start off with that so we all kind of um, get familiar with WebEx and um, how things are running for this meeting tonight. Um, if you have only called in um, 
rather than using a laptop or an iPad, you're in listen only mode. So you cannot see the presentation that's up on our screen right now. If you're able to hop on on a laptop or a device that has video, you can go to eastbankstudy.nashville.gov and you can stream the presentation that way. Um, we will be uh, later on in today today's meeting so doing some interactive exercises um, using menti.com and I'll explain more about uh, how to access that um, when we get there. But just so you know, have your phone at the ready. Um, and if you're very tech savvy and able to navigate watching something on your phone and using menti.com, then um, extra pat on the back for you. Um, Following those interactive exercises, we're going to have um, a time for a Q&A. Um, we've had some folks submit questions in advance to our East Bank info email address. But while we're going along, um, if you look on the right side of your screen, you'll see um, a Q&A panel. You can open that up and at any point in the meeting, um, type your question and, and we'll try to get to as many as those as we can um, during that portion of the meeting. This is also being streamed on Facebook Live through Metro National Network. So um, you can also put questions uh, there and we'll try to get to those as well. Um, if you have friends or neighbors that weren't able to make it tonight, um, we will be posting a recording of this meeting um, once it's available on our website. So please um, look out for that and pass that along to your friends and neighbors. So quickly, here's our agenda for tonight. I'm gonna go over the project in, intro and key goals for the East Bank study. And then um, we'll have a chance to meet the Perkins Eastman team and hear from them on um, their approach for this process. And then the bulk of the evening will be our interactive time where we'll be hearing from you um, on your ideas for the future. And then we'll have a Q and A and then wrap up um, so I will get on with the project intro and the key goals. So the East Bank planning study is a public process led by the Metro Nashville Planning Department with the goal of creating a long range plan for the East Bank. And the plan will um, be adopted by the Planning Commission and guide future development on the East Bank. When we're looking at the study area, here's a, a more broader picture in context of our city. Um, the circles are a half mile, a mile, and then two miles, if you're able to see that on your screen. So um, you can see how central the East Bank is to, to our downtown and to our city and how many um, neighborhoods it is so close to and how many wonderful neighborhoods um, in our city, and, and we are wanting to vision what do neighborhoods on the East Bank look like um, that are part of our beautiful city. And then to give a little more of a closer look um, at the study area, uh, this yellow line highlights um, the study area. So we um, go from Jefferson Street, just south of Top Golf, um, all the way along the river down to um, if you know where Music City Karting and um, the Airsoft uh, place and the various CrossFit gyms. And then um, we use I-24 where it comes across the river um, as the eastern boundary all the way up the interstate. So you can see that it includes um, a large part of the East Bank. It's about 338 acres of land. Um, we have the Titans Stadium and parking lots as kind of the, the central point and then um, a number of uh, industrial and other uses uh, on the East Bank today. The main goal for our study is to conceive of a connected and cohesive public open space network that reinforces the river as a centerpiece for Nashville. Um, and within that main goal um, are some of our, our key um, ideas that we want to pursue in this study. Um, they're in no particular order, but I will briefly touch on each of them. Um, we want to celebrate and enhance the river. Um, it feels sometimes like we've turned our back on the river, particularly on the East Bank, and, and it's a wonderful asset to have a river that runs through your downtown. Um, and so we want to figure out how we um, uh, embrace the river and um, really 
make it accessible to all of Nashvilleans. Um, we want to plan for new vibrant neighborhoods on the East Bank. We want to establish a multimodal vision for all modes of transportation. So um, not just cars, but bikes, pedestrians, walkers, runners, um, and folks of all ages to be able to access and enjoy um, the East Bank. Improve north-south street connectivity. Um, I'm sure many of you are familiar with the East Bank and know that it can be very tricky uh, to navigate getting north to south through the area. Um, if there's no real direct streets and you kind of have to um, go through a maze to get from one end to the other. We would love to see that be uh, simplified and more direct. Uh, we want to identify a connected network of high quality open spaces. It's already been started with Cumberland Park on the East Bank and the Greenway. Um, and we want to see how that connects to not just green spaces within the East Bank, but on our wider Greenway system that Parks and Greenways work so hard on. And then, of course, planning for a long term environmental resiliency, being very aware of um, flooding issues um, and stormwater and um, planning for, for the future um, to be responsible um, in what is um, built and constructed on the East Bank. So I'm about to pass it on over for introductions from the uh, consulting group with Perkins Eastman, but just to um, highlight the things that this study will do um, once adopted uh, by the Planning Commission. The first is that it will um, guide our land use policy as an update to Nashville Next. Nashville Next being the comprehensive plan for Nashville Davidson County um, and the land use policy being what the Planning Commission um, reviews all future rezoning cases against. So establishing a land use policy that really encapsulates the vision that we are beginning to develop with the community um, tonight is um, one of the key components of this. The second is um, updating the major and collector street plan, which is our um, street plan for all our major streets in Nashville um, and set establishing design standards for um, the construction of future roads. Um, also, creating our future design standards for new buildings on the East Bank, um, considering um, what we want the lots and blocks uh, to look like in this area um, and heights and um, all of the, the design standards for new buildings. Um, and then helping us to prioritize those projects for capital investment that are um, gonna be most effective in helping us um, see the vision that we're trying to establish through this process. So I'm gonna pass it over to Eric Fang with Perkins Eastman, um, and he's gonna introduce the Perkins Eastman consulting team. Well, thank you, Anna. Um, <clears throat> I'm Eric Fang, and um, I'm a principal at Perkins Eastman, and together with my colleague, um, Juan Davies, we're leading the East Bank team, and we're so excited. Um, actually, I'm here in Nashville. We came out for the meeting um, and uh, hopefully, um, I'm sitting in a hotel room, but hopefully we'll be able to do future meetings in person or maybe even out at the site. And um, with me today, I just want to introduce our team is uh, Deb Barallo from Barallo um, Public Relations and uh, Ed Henley, who's Pillars Development. And um, they are um, a core part of our team to lead the public engagement and the economic development parts of our team. Uh, we're also supported by um, uh, Richie Jones and HCLA, some of you may know them as Hodgson Douglas, a very, very respected, very talented firm of landscape designers. Uh, HRNA, who will be leading the economic market finance piece um, analyses, and um, WSP, which is a um, large engineering um, firm that is um, has been in Nashville for years and years, and um, will be spearheading our efforts on the waterfront, establishing the um, environmental <clears throat> and resiliency and sustainability of the site for the future. And we'll also be really the point on traffic and mobility. So um, we're really excited about this team. We think it combines, you know, some 
really great knowledge of national traditions with some perspective that we've gained working around the country and around the world. And uh, we've got great talent, different talents. And, um, we're, you know, we're going to be working with you throughout the rest of the year to, to um, bring that to bear. So on uh, the next slide, I'll tell you a little bit about our firm. Perkins Eastman is a uh, planning uh, architecture and design firm. Um, we're actually a very diverse firm. We, you know, besides all of these uh, big, you know, waterfronts and urban revitalization and so forth, we um, are very diverse in working in um, healthcare, hospitals, schools, universities, campuses, <coughs> residential buildings, hotels. And um, that's one of the things that we're excited about bringing to bear on this project because, you know, we think that all many of these areas will uh, come to play a part in the future of the East Bank. And so we can draw on the expertise of our colleagues very readily. Go to the next slide and we'll tell you a little bit about the process. So while we are leading on the design and planning, as you can see, you know, we bring a really multidisciplinary set of skills to this. And uh, just to explain the process a little bit, um, we're all going to be working concurrently. It's not a linear process. And we've organized the, uh, our effort into three main phases. The end will be the final report, but uh, the three main steps will be um, analysis. <clears throat> That'll stretch through the uh, midsummer. Um, the second phase is options. And the third is plan. I'll just explain a little bit about how, how we take everyone through this. Um, so, you know, as you mentioned, we have folks who are looking at the market, the economic picture and so forth. And they'll be crunching numbers together with our engineers, WSP, they'll be crunching traffic numbers and data and so forth. Um, you know, alongside of that, we'll be reviewing all the existing plans that have been done. We, as Anna and Lucy mentioned, we really uh, want to build on what's been done. <clears throat> and we want to learn from all the ideas, take the best ones, and you know, push them forward even more. Um, so th we know there's been a lot of work. So we're not starting pretending to kind of come in and overturn everything. We want to really build on what's been done. Um, we uh, are doing a lot of on-site observation. Um, we've walked the site. We've driven the surrounding areas. Um, we've actually, uh, one of our team members, he's out on a scooter right now going <laughs> up and down the river. I don't know if you guys know that. I don't know if our insurance covers that, but uh, <clears throat> anyway. And uh, the fire department was actually uh, good enough to uh, take us out in a boat. So we actually got to see the site from the water because we feel that really gives a unique perspective on this. Um, and then finally, we're, we're back in the office and we're doing design analysis. So all of that culminates in a um, set of principles, you know, by midsummer, by July. And, um, you know, we don't think that the city, all of you should have to wait till the end of the year to understand what the plan is, right? So really establishing um, you know, the, the key organizational principles for the site, scope, the boundaries, the, the program. Um, well, those are, you know, every step of the way we want to build consensus. So with those principles that we will develop with you all, uh, we will take th those and develop, you know, various options to test out how we can kind of achieve those best. Um, in the fall, we'll take the preferred option that, again, we'll work out which which uh, option is the best and maybe cherry pick amongst them to develop the preferred plan. Uh, and then we'll wrap that up in a final report that will really be out of the vehicle that the city can use to carry forward and implement the plan. So, um, <laughs> so I'll just tell you a little bit about our approach in a nutshell in the next slide. Um, so a uh, handful of kind of key tenets that we always bring to our work. One is that, you know, we, like I said, we start with the water. Uh, we think that's the really unique thing about this site. Uh, Lucia mentioned, you know, this is really, the water was the genesis of the city. Uh, we think that that's the thing that really pulls it apart from um, other sites in the region and the country and so forth. And it's a thing that, you know, can really create some ideas for how we look at the land side. Um, you know, water is also, it's the, it's the really unique and public resource for the whole city. So we believe that making connections to the river for all the neighborhoods around the city is very, very important. Um, 
Third one was that we emphasize the public realm. So what do we mean by that? <clears throat> um, we know that through time there will be a lot of development and you know various buildings, markets will change and so forth. Different architects will come in. Um, but the key thing that will remain is the public realm, the parks, the streets, the plazas, and that's where the city leads and that's where we need your help to envision what that'll be. That's the framework that creates the patterns, the value and so forth for the rest of the development. We like to focus on implementation. We know that uh, in many cases, in most cases, these plans, um, they, they sometimes they can sit on the shelf and um, implementation is the thing that we want to focus on. That we're not in this to create another plan that's going to be kind of, you know, <clears throat> something that people will be talking about 10 years ago. Oh, that was a nice plan. We want to make sure, you know, this is the template that actually sets things in motion and, and um, is, is implemented. Um, Build on, I'm going to skip to the bottom and then go back. We like to build on the unique qualities of the place. One thing that we have heard in our short time visiting is that whatever happened to the East Bank wants to be Nashville. And so we don't, you know, we're still learning. We don't know exactly what that means. And that's why we're having meetings like this is to hear from you all. What, what does that actually mean? We want it to be authentic and uh, really look like it can be nowhere else in the world but Nashville. And then the last thing is we want to build consensus as we go. And um, our next slide kind of talks a little bit about that. So, um, so what, what does that mean? So all the data and the, you know, the, the analysis and so forth um, needs to be ground truth. And there are different, lots of different types of groups that we need to meet with lots of different people with different interests, different knowledge, different expertise. Ed and Deb have been instrumental in trying to identify all of those folks. And they're going to talk about that in a moment and help us organize how we do that. Because we have a short period of time and we need to do that in an organized fashion. So we first thing is we want to start everyone together. And that's, that's what's happening today before we get too far, because we need to understand your priorities, all the things that you know, we're just trying to listen and learn. Um, you know, for better or for worse, you know, we're all in this online world that hopefully is going to morph pretty quickly, um, you know, to in person. We want to make sure that we hear all the ideas and we want to make sure that we bring everybody along the way. We're not going to come back in September and say, oh, here's the plan. We want to make sure that, you know, we're getting the input and we're, we're sharing with you our progress in a transparent manner so we don't have us any surprises at the end. So, um, and with that, Deb, if you want to start to explain kind of our, our, our plan here, and uh, thank you very much. It's Deb, you're muted, Try, start over. We're all learning. I, I know, but you think after a year and two months, we'd all know, but thank you very much. I'm excited about being here with everyone and that we've got a great turnout and I'm already seeing some people making comments in the chat. That's fantastic. So our goal is to get to all that we can and we need all the folks that are on this WebEx right now to reach out to that many more people to let them know know uh, what we're going to be doing. So we're going to be going to different community uh, community leaders. We're going to do outreach to the neighborhood groups. We're going to do pop-up meetings. We're going to ask like, where can we go? Do you have a church function going on? Is there a school activity that's happening? We want to set up booths and meet people, talk to them, get their ideas. We want as many ideas and thoughts as possible. And we're going to be doing presentations. So reach out to us to come to your church group, to your association group, to talk about what we're, we want to see and get your opinion on. Community meetings, we're going to have the project website, online surveys that we'll be doing, paper surveys. Yes, we're going to bring back the paper surveys as soon as we're free with all this COVID issue. And we're going to have focus groups and Facebook Live and Q&As because we already have an email address. And our goal is for you to tell us what we need to know. What do you want? And tell them all the groups we're going to be in front of. Absolutely. So as Deb said, and as much high energy as she has, we're going to take that all the way through this project. So a few of those groups are on the screen in front of you. Um, again, this is not a complete list, but we definitely want to start with our neighborhood groups, right? The folks who are the closest to the site, the people that we can go out and see and meet them where they are. 
Um, and then also the community organizations represented by a lot of the churches, a lot of the folks that are in the political realm, as well as the social justice realm, and then all of our transit and mobility organizations as well. We know we have a responsibility for moving people to the space, through the space, and making it a space that they enjoy. And the only way we can really do that is by going out and having a conversation with them. Deb and I have been coming up with all kinds of ways to scheme and plan and to make sure we're invading the neighborhood um, on a regular basis. But we do want that help from you guys. We are experts at what we do, um, but what we know by being experts is that we need the help of all of those people that we want to engage. Um, and then also property owners. Uh, we've had a really, really, really in-depth look at the site. Uh, we've, we've touched base with a lot of those property owners, but we also want to make sure that any and all information that you guys have as um, counterparts to those property owners, you may be you know, working there, just anything and everything that you can expose us to would be great. And again, the whole, the whole concept around building consensus as we go, we want to be transparent and we want to be the conduit, right? So we want information to flow both ways. We are going to be asking a lot of questions. We're going to listen a lot. We're not going to try and dictate what you say. Uh, but we also will be presenting what we're doing, sharing our team's uh, efforts. We will be hard at work. Um, as as uh, Eric let you know early on, uh, we do have a process, so there'll be a lot of activity that we'll be doing behind the scenes. We want to make sure you get a peek behind that curtain. Great. Thanks, Ed, Deb, and everybody else. Um, this, whole, this looks a little bit like a hole in the donut, but what we've discovered is that all around the East Bank, there are incredible special places. And we want your help to find these special places and bring them to the fore and connect them into uh, the East Bank. And if we could really just beg, borrow, and steal some of those magnificent things you can share with us and, and start to fill the East Bank with these charming, delightful places, I think we would go a long way to trying to realize what Nashville wants to be uh, in, in, the, in the next generation and a great place for you all. So the next few slides I'm going to do are just a little bit of our discovery just to spur the conversation moving forward. As you heard from Eric, uh, we've been out on the water. Um, I'm sure many of you have all walked this edge of the water and experienced the water, but we want to make this much more of a the center of Nashville. We want the east and west banks to talk to one another, one another across the river so it doesn't feel like a little bit like the divide that it is today find a way that we can really make this a truly special place in Nashville and that the Cumberland really informs a lot of what we do. So we have a lot of issues with, with the water that we need to solve, but we think we can make something truly special and delightful uh, for all Nashvilleans along the waterfront here. Next image is really a little, just a little bit about discovery. We've spent a little bit of time, as we said, walking the neighborhood and driving through and touring Casey Place and having lunches out in the neighborhood. And we think there's just some real delight that we need to bring to Nashville, uh, to East Bank, that's very different from anywhere else. So it's, it needs to represent who we are today and who we want to be in the future for future generations to grow up and love and adore and embrace this neighborhood. And the next slide is really just, you know, you began uh, on the on the West Bank. And there, there are probably some really delightful moments in downtown that we want to share and we want to grow from. We've discovered some of the wonderful arcades and passageways through buildings. There's a scale of smallness that, ex that exists around the, the streets that are across the way, and also the grandness of the promenade that is on the West side. So I think we can borrow from some of these things again. Uh, it's not to replicate, it's not to copy, but elements of the scale that we've heard that the smallness is what national grew up as and uh, we want to bring some of that smallness and charm to the east side the east bank um and we're going to anna's going to help us go through the next few slides on mentimeter and we'll continue the conversation but i think it really is about making a great place uh, for the next generation yes thank you Vaughn. um so as I mentioned, we're going to do some interactive exercises using Mentimeter. So I'm going to just stop sharing this presentation for a moment and share um, Mentimeter so that you will know um, what to go to. So if you see on your screen, um, if you have your cell phone, you can either scan that QR code or um, you can go to menti.com and it will ask you to enter the code on your screen, which is 15174853. So I'm just going to give a moment um, for folks to get um, 
logged on. Hopefully this is working. If there's any issues, um, you can put them in the chat and we'll try to try to navigate those, but um, it should be fairly straightforward. Um, so either scan the QR code or go to menti.com and enter 1517. Do hearts mean people are able to get on? Is that what the hearts mean? I feel like an old lady. Yeah. I'm like, what yeah. are the hearts? <laughs> I think that yeah. means we're making progress here. We're going to figure yeah. this all out and then we're all going to meet in person. I know that's what everyone would prefer anyway, but okay. Yes, yes. Um, hearts are showing that that folks are able to get onto it. Um, and so, and as we've mentioned, we do really, really want to be um, in person. So in the future, we plan to offer um, a hybrid option for those folks that also feel comfortable being in person and then also ha still have some virtual opportunities um, for folks as well to help us reach the widest audience possible. So, so how we're going to do this is that um, Vaughn is going to give um, a little overview on a different topic, and then we're going to switch over to Mentimeter to answer a question related to that. And then he will present another topic, and then we'll come back here and do a question. So we have five different topics to go, go through and a question for each. So I'm going to switch back to the presentation. Um, so that Vaughn can give us the first um, topic and then I'll pull this back up. So if you haven't had chance to um, log in yet, there will still be time. Um, so Vaughn, Great. over to you. Thanks, Anna. So what, as you heard a little bit, we always want to start with where you began. And uh, there's such an amazing legacy of the city growing up, um, the, the West Bank where the higher bluffs are historically became the downtown. The East Bank was a little bit more low lying. Um, and it grew up. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Y and, yes, and so, yes. So the Go. East Bank Go. has always really had a very different feel from, from what the downtown was. And we really want to understand a little bit of what we imagine the city might look like uh, building on the connections and the bridges and and that legacy of the past. But to think about a city of the future, a neighborhood of the future, and what these, these elements might be on the East Bank. So with that, we have sort of the first question. Um, yes, let me. Sorry, you have to. There we go. So uh, one last chance, if you're just finally relocated your phone, um, here's how you get into these questions. Um, either scan the, the QR code or um, go to menti.com and enter the code. We're going to um, open the first question. Um, this is a word cloud question. It should pull up on your phone just fine. Um, what do you like about the East Bank today? Um, I think you have about 25 um, characters um, in order to answer that. So um, please go ahead and answer. And we'll we'll have plenty of time um, for folks, and this is wonderful for us all to see in real time um, what people like about the East Bank today. Okay, well, um, there's still a little bit of time if you're still uh, frantically typing in, but um, what this uh, application does is the more that a word is said, the bigger it is on the screen. So I think we can kind of see um, some of those priorities and some of the top things that people like about the East Bank. Um, it looks like number one is Cumberland Park. Um, which is a wonderful park and asset um, for our city. And then we have the stadium and views of downtown. Um, and we're going to be saving this information for um, for our team as we move forward so that we really build on, on these assets. So please continue to type in um, as you get chance. And I'm going to switch it back for Vaughn to uh, take us to the next slide. 
Great. So building on some of those ideas of what you'd like to see, um, there's obviously going to be change. Um, it's fairly heavily industrial oriented in many areas of the, the East Bank. And so we are going to look to uh, continue to manage the change at the waterfront and uh, try to predict some certainty about the future, what would happen with the stadium and, and planning and working with the stadium folks. We've heard, as we saw in the Mentimeter just a minute ago, the need for housing and diversity and employment. We really need to make this a place for, for Nashvillians um, and something that you can live, work, play, uh, recreate along the waterfront and think of the uses that might be there to, uh, to accommodate that and to complement what you have in your current existing neighborhoods uh, that you might be missing. There may be expansive spaces or access to downtown. So we'd love to hear from you what some of the uses might be that you think should come to the East Bank to, to make a great livable place uh, to complement your neighborhoods and the downtown. Yes, so next question is, what would you like to see on the East Bank? So we're, we're looking forward now. Um, what would you like to see on the East Bank? Um, whether it's something that isn't currently there or something you want to see enhanced. Um, we want to want to know what you're Great looking food. forward to. That certainly <laughs> plays on what Nashville has to offer today. Docks for boats. It's exciting riverboat. You know you have a riverboat. Okay, yeah, please, please keep responding. This is wonderful. We can see um, some of those uh, more often typed in words, restaurants, affordable housing, a boardwalk, greenways. Um, so please, please keep going. And, and we're going to move to um, the next topic. This is something that we need to be part of helping solve as a regional at a regional level as well as a local level. So we know that there's lots of plans already in place for beautiful greenways uh, to encourage pedestrian cycling and walking. That's what you see in the right hand image on the bottom. Um, and on the left hand side, a, a mobility plan that really ties your your bus service and, and, and public transit out into the neighborhood. Um, but we want to make sure that we're connecting this in the right way at a local level at a micro level. So whether it's working with WeGo to, in, to provide more access to buses, pick up and drop off to get into downtown, to connect through the neighborhoods, just to connect locally and, you know, to connect from Casey Place or down Main Street and Woodland and, and, and make sure that those linkages are there. We want to make sure that there are opportunities simply to walk. I think that's at the first level of mobility and then to be cycling um, and taking other forms of transit to maybe avoid people having to get in their car and do another short trip. We want to make sure that we're accessible to the local community first. So with that, we're going to ask a little bit of a Q&A about how we see ourselves getting to and from um, the water's edge. Yes, and so um, this question is asking you, what mobility or transportation challenges do you face today when you go to the East Bank? So what are those things that um, either uh, discourage you from using a different form of transportation or um, are hard, you know, really challenging about the East Bank and something that this plan could help address? There's a new word you haven't had there before. How many, how many T's in Titans traffic? That's a tongue twister. <laughs> Love it. Docks are missing. That's interesting. So people would come by boat. Have people in the past come by boat to go to the games? I 
I'm nodding my head. Yes, people used to you go have. to boats. Oh, because you're a boater, I know. Yep. More bike lanes, too car centric. Too long of a walk I and mean, we really need to make it a pleasant experience to do all of these things to walk and bike and beautiful shaded streets and gardens and parks and as we go through this process you know from tonight's broad big picture visioning we'll be diving into some of these themes and really trying to understand uh when you say parking um does that mean yeah, you don't know where to park or there's there's not enough parking or the parking only seems to be um, for office workers. Um, so we're excited to to dive into what we've heard and come back to you with some more specific and guided questions. Um, so our next question or our next theme is on the river itself. Right. So we know that the river comes with great attributes. It also comes with issues and problems and you know, part of what we need to do here is solve the right problems. One of them is to be able to manage um, the water as it rises during a flood event. Um, and how do we make sure that we're mitigating any issues that might occur during a flood flood issue? We think there are opportunities in that, that we can actually make gracious um, expanses for the water to grow and expand. We can make it more environmentally resilient so that the parks and open spaces actually help to manage that system, but there are also beautiful greenways. Um, and then we want to make sure that it is this beautiful backbone and centerpiece for the city. So we really, we're putting a lot of stake in, in how you see the Cumberland River and how you imagine the Cumberland River to be as this beautiful uh, seam in the city rather than a boundary or an edge. And part of, a big part of that is going to be creating a much more predictable uh, environment during these uh, Flood events and and in, in in the in the river, river itself. So, looking forward to hearing some ideas about how you might envision the river and see the river functioning uh, as a great place in the future. Absolutely. And so, for this question, we actually have it in two. Um, the first is a voting one. So, just for us to get a sense of um, if folks have been down to the river. All right, seems pretty overwhelming. Yes. <laughs> Start with the river. I love that. That's great. That's a very good thing. Okay, and then the second part to this question is um, what would get you to go to the river? Are there other things um, you would want to see on the river, at the river, by the river? What would, what would get you down to the river more often? Good. You know, most great waterfront cities or riverfront cities do have beautiful, take advantage of the views of the river with their restaurants. And, you know, we know that on the city side, it's sort of the, it's the back edge of the city. I could just imagine how wonderful it would be to be sitting out, looking at the skyline of the city and, and enjoying all of these things that everybody's talking about here. Somebody's got an exciting idea about the cantilevered edge of the waterfront. That's exciting. Yeah, that's some really, really Children. exciting, great Children's, ideas here. Children's Museum showed up a couple of times in a few of the questions. That's also interesting. More kids' activities. Yeah. Okay. Uh, please continue to, to vote. If you haven't, we're going to move to our last um, topic, which is parks and greenways. This is really something that I think is dear to all Nashvilleans is just being able to get out. We probably really appreciate it during this past year, just how much space we need and how, how we need to make that much more accessible 
Um, and it can also be much more functional. So I think not just having open space, but functional open space. So whether you're riding, whether you're picnicking, bringing your kids for a softball game, coming to a small concert along the waterfront, um, I think there are huge opportunities here to make really active, programmed uh, open space that is you know, both active and passive, I guess. Uh, so we think there are wonderful opportunities along the north-south, sort of connecting the river walk. We think there are opportunities that that green space connects to the east, connects the east and west. Uh, so making sure that the bridges connect over and that we connect back into with fingers of green into the East Bank neighborhoods themselves. So whether we make uh, Shelby and Woodland and Maine into beautiful garden streets or park-like streets connecting through, we think those are all really wonderful opportunities to add to this green heritage. Um, that is such, it's such a great thing about the Tennessean landscape is you, you only have to leave any of the main streets in a block away are these beautiful green corridors of neighborhood streets. So we want to make sure that those neighborhood streets and tree canopy comes into all of the environments that we have. It'll make it a much more softer, resilient space. We have what parking lots are a huge contributor and roadways to heat island, the heat island effect. Of, and we think we can really create a much more gentle landscape and gentle environment with improving the green. All right. And so our last question with Mentimeter is, what types of new green space do you want to see on the East Bank? Um, and these are just ideas, um, whether it's parks, trails, greenways, recreational fields, other things. So please use your imagination just as you did with the previous question. I'm not trying to lead you with those examples, but um, would love to get a sense of, of the green spaces that would bring you to the East Bank. Anna, I think our parks department should be very excited by some of these responses. People love the parks in this city and they're an incredibly hardworking department. Absolutely. I love the word forest that somebody's got in there, forest canopy. I could just see lush green. Oh, these are great ideas. This. this is wonderful. Absolutely. So please, if you're still working on voting, please, please do so. We will be saving, uh, saving these and coming back to these often. Um, so really appreciate you participating um, with that activity. It's a wonderful yeah, tool. So, so we're going to move into um, the Q&A time. Um, so for this, I'm going to stop sharing my screen after I go through a couple of um, instructions of how to do this, just in case um, uh, folks haven't had a chance yet. Um, you should see on the right side of your screen, if you're on a laptop or computer, um, the Q&A panel. Um, you can type your questions in there, um, and we'll start moving through those after this. If you're viewing on Facebook, you, we have um, a staff member looking at any questions that are posted there. Um, if you um, are on a phone and you can't interact in this way, we have um, our email address, eastbankinfo at nashville.gov, that um, we'll be glad to respond to your questions on there. Um, for the most part, uh, either Metro planning staff or other Metro staff or um, Perkins Eastman will be responding. Uh, we do have the council members on the call um, and I know that they're keenly listening to everything that's presented, um, but we have to uh, follow um, the rules for the Open Meetings Act. Um, and so the council members um, cannot um, discuss or answer your questions directly in this virtual format. Um, so um, if you do have questions for them, I know that they would be very glad to receive them um, via email or phone call. Um, and we hope that uh, we'll be getting to a hybrid format where um, 
will have a little more um, ability for for everyone to be able to respond to questions. So um, with that, let me take a look at our Q&A. I'm just going to be moderating and, and um, passing off questions to other can I see a question on here? This is Lucy. I'm I'm butting in. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I'm not following your rules. I apologize. <laughs> if we were in person, I would. So there was a question about um, the juvenile uh, justice, and obviously, um, you know, when when we're looking at a metro function or an important court function, there are a series of decisions that would need to be made, um, both with uh, the court as well as counsel. And so my goal here, and, and we've been speaking with them, is just to ensure that we um, establish that vision we've been talking about. I think they're open to being part of that visioning. And then a separate decision uh, would need to be made ultimately about the courts. But at this point, we're really just in a sort of an assessment phase. And I'm really pleased to have them uh, working with us closely on the technical advisory piece. And I know that the councilman could um, probably talk a little more about the council process um, offline, but thank you, thank you for that question. Um, and uh, we, we understand how important that function is for our city, and we want to make sure that it um, that that uh, that we're planning well, both for the East Bank as well as the court there. So thank you. Wonderful, thank you, Lucy. I'm going to quickly flip over to a couple of questions that we got. Um, from uh, that were emailed in. The first is um, regarding when does the project start and end? Um, so I wonder if um, Eric or Vaughn just wanted to kind of talk about their piece. Um, and then obviously the East Bank and its future will is ongoing and we're, we're creating a plan for the next 20 or 30 years. Um, but in terms of this focused piece, um, Eric or Vaughn, did you just want to talk about your timeline? Yeah, so uh, we just started. Um, we uh, came out a couple of weeks ago to start to walk the site and gather maps and all that stuff. So we're really just, we haven't really laid a pen, uh, you know, pen mark down on paper. We're just listening. This is really considered the real beginning of the project. And the project um, will extend through the end of the year. You know, as as um, I've gone over, we hope to have a, a set of principles that will guide the rest of the project sometime, you know, in the summer, and uh, options, you know, later in the summer, and then plan by the fall. So that's how we're going to uh, develop this and bring this along. So the only thing I would add, most of the folks here are familiar with um, sort of the community planning process, and um, our goal is to have sort of the plan amendment piece of this in the fall. And then because of the area's complexities, there's gonna be a lot of additional work that needs to be done at a more detailed level. Um, and so that would carry on um, thereafter. But I think the fall is, is gonna be one of our most important sort of first deliverables. And there'll be lots of public meetings and engagement between now and then to ensure that we have um, a vision that that uh, is a credit to the community. Absolutely. I'm gonna go back to our um, Q&A panel. Um, question from Emily Thadden. Um, Oh, sorry, my Q&A panel just moved itself. Um, let me get back down to it. Um, uh, I heard walking, biking, bus for transportation. However, we need a massive public transit overhaul. How will you plan for what should happen in the future around public transit? Um, I think Eric and Vaughn, we've had a couple of conversations um, and heard a lot about transit. Um, did you want to just talk about, oh, or Lucy, do you want to, the general approach on transit? Yeah, I would just say that we understand how important our multimodal planning piece is to this overall plan. And, and Vaughn and Eric and their team have a lot of experience integrating a multimodal vision within an overall plan. And so our goal is to do that. However, it is important to acknowledge that we passed a transportation um, plan last year that identifies opportunities to make investments throughout the county. And so we'll be working very closely 
with the DOT and with Feta Massimo and the mayor's office to ensure that whatever we envision here integrates within that vision and is um, you know, implemented in a way that meets kind of the broader framework um, that has been put in place and voted on at council. And I think, you know, uh, the, the approach that we take to our work is that the people come first. The work needs to be a people centric plan. And I think that goes hand in glove with what the city has already outlined, that it's a people focused solution to mobility. Um, OK, and then a question from Ben. Is the Corps of Engineers involved in this process? They have more to do with flood control than anyone. Um, absolutely, the Corps of Engineers is very much involved. Um, we have established um, a few different committees to help us uh, through this process, um, one of which is a technical advisory committee made up of agencies like the Corps, uh, the Coast Guard, um, Metro Stormwater, TDOT, TDEC, um, Metro Parks, um, a, a wide range of agencies that are involved in um, reviewing the river and the East Bank. Um, and so we definitely have um, very technical meetings set up with the Corps of Engineers to understand um, their, their regulations and um, the work they've done on the banks and definitely have will be taking their guidance um, on a lot of that technical work. I can I butt in again? Am I going to make you mad? No, no, no. Go ahead. Ah, I can see the Q&A too. So there's a good question here about the consultant team and how we um, and, and the value of bringing in outside experts. And I want to talk a little bit about that because I think that this is an area, you know, the planning department does planning work all over the county, right? And every part of the city and every neighborhood sort of demands a different response. Um, this particular area has some important technical um, technical questions that we think need to be solved with the very best planning uh, and design practices. And there's a lot to learn from other cities in how they have addressed rail infrastructure, for example, in a way that is unique and interesting and still allows pedestrian access. And, um, how we work well um, when you're adjacent to an interstate system, right, that has its own demands. And so we, we're excited to have that type of expertise. But at the same time, the consultant team is very much made up of a lot of um, local experts and firms, um, such as the landscape team, who know the city really well, know the DNA here, know the things that make it unique. And so I find that blend to be really important. Um, and so my hope is that we don't bring one dimensional uh, solutions to you, but that we have a team that will argue with one another, that will debate, um, you know, outcomes. And we can do that when we have different sort of technical levels of experience, but also um, just different perspectives on the world. And so there's a lot of local expertise here to make sure that our city's priorities are defined and that we use the outside um, teams to take our priorities and say, okay, there's a very specific problem here that we know has been addressed here, and here's some ideas for you to consider, but ultimately it is for Nashville to set its course. And so um, I'm excited to, to bring a lot of diverse perspectives to that. I might quit butting in, Anna, I'm sorry. I don't think you will, but it's totally fine. <laughs> it's totally fine. Um, uh, a question or more of a kind of a comment um, from Emily about um, the kind of the virtual meeting format and um, attendees not being able to see who's on the call and not being able to see the other questions and comments. And that's something that um, is not ideal about this virtual environment and definitely um, we want to address that in the future. So I just want to say that we we hear you and see you on that. Um, and unfortunately, that's just when the WebEx tool that we use uh, when we have a, a large meeting, this is the the kind of the format that we have to use um, as Metro government. But we intend to have in-person meetings and much more back and forth. Uh, we realize that this is not ideal, but we do um, think that it's still valid to get 
the process moving. And so um, I totally hear you on that. And my favorite is being in a room with other people and in community meetings. So um, this is not my favorite either, but thank you for, for bringing that to our attention. I just want to acknowledge that for everyone else on the call um, who might feel frustrated at not being able to see how many folks are attending or who else is attending that um, we, we hear you on that and hope in the future that we will be able to do more um, in person and, and use some other of our virtual tools. Um, so let me go to another question. Uh, we have we definitely have um, Deb or Ed, if you want to jump in on any of the, the um, kind of outreach and engagement themes that we're hearing. Um, got a question here about a specific plan to do outreach with marginalized communities, especially unhoused people who live in the study area. Um, Deb or Ed, if you wanted to talk about um, the folks on our neighborhood committee, um, the Loaves and Fishes Ministry and some of the other churches in the area that we've been working with. Well, I'll jump in there. I think you, you kind of highlighted it. I think we definitely want to make sure that we're engaging the folks and the organizations and entities that are already in the community. We want to make sure that everything that they're doing is one, amplified by our efforts. Um, but two, we also want to make sure that they're a conduit. So there are already trusted parties in the community. We don't want to try to railroad and do anything that would, would cause disruption to things that are happening there. We are more um, there to gain insight, right? To gain value and then to bring value to the voices of those who oftentimes aren't heard. So for us, it's just a detailed, a detailed and extensive look at who all is in the community, who's doing work and make sure we're not absent-minded, that we're not missing anyone. So just like Emily pointed out, if there are people that you don't see us uh, clearly highlighting in our work, we don't mind being called out for it. I think Deb would echo me here is the, the, the way we do the best work is by leveraging the community. Uh, we're, we're, we're agents uh, for the work, and so we want to make sure that we're held accountable just like any representative would be, and we're going to be present. So you're going to see us. I think, you know, I don't know if it comes through from, you know, hearing us talk, but Deb and I are really excited about this. I mean, we're this is something um, that's been long overdue for Nashville. Uh, you take the time, you take the opportunity when it comes, but we're extremely excited to work with each other as well as work with the community. Um, I know MDHA um, was mentioned in a lot of conversation about um, what's happening at Casey and also is there a plan to extend that work. We won't speak for MDHA, but we will definitely be working closely with MDHA uh, residents there. I've had great opportunities of working with MDHA in the past, and we do have um, some internal groups that are made up of a lot of neighborhood representatives and organizations uh, with some great people who have not been bashful thus far about telling us that places we need to show up and places we need to go. Um, and I know we'll have our council members also guiding us and giving us help there. So we we, we make it a key focus of ours. Um, and we also will make sure we're listening to those parties, similar to you all on this call and when we're out in the community, we'll be taking your advice and we'll be guided by it. So Ed has done so well, I'm covering all that. I just wanna say that please, our whole job here is to listen to what you have to say. So if you think we miss anyone or forgotten someone, we want y'all to tell us that. And we will make ourselves available at any time that you want to look at our list, see who we've reached out to or who we plan to. And if you see anyone missing, let us know. You are gonna be our eyes and ears to keep us informed. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we had a quick question about, uh, can you tell us number of attendees? It kind of, uh, I think has fluctuated through all the past hour, but it's around 50 on this call, not including um, staff and the consulting team. Um, and I'm not sure how many folks are watching it on uh, Facebook Live. Um, and as I said, we'll have this recording up on our website, hopefully by tomorrow. Um, and so when we previously had the meeting that um, Councilman Withers held back in February, I think we had around 100 folks on that meeting. And then we've had over 200 views of the meeting. So definitely um, had some, some really well attended uh, meetings to date. So um, hopefully that's helpful for some context. Um, Question from Steve Johnson. Um, Chattanooga's riverfront is so successful in part because of the existing fabric that was in place and renovation of buildings that quickly happened. Is there a city riverfront you feel is a good example that hints at what the, the East Bank might become? And I wonder if uh, Eric or Vaughn, Vaughn, you wanna? 
Yeah, I'm happy to take that on. That's a great, great example, Steve. Um, Chattanooga is really amazing and solved a great, uh, it was a great solution for Chattanooga. I think Louisville, I think um, Hartford, Connecticut has a beautiful access to its waterfront with an elevated walkway. But I just want to caution that, you know, we're not going to be, be copying anything here. We need to make this about Nashville and solve the problems or that Nashville has and, and provide for Nashville in a really unique manner here. So we have a very long reach of the East Bank and really it goes beyond our site and connects south down the river and it connects up north uh, as well. So we want to make sure that we probably have different solutions for each of the segments of the river um, and that they reflect what we want to achieve on the land side as well. But So the water informs the edges and the edges inform the land side. But you're absolutely right. There are some wonderful examples to to learn from, uh, and there are waterfronts that we have worked on, whether it's in California or in on the East Coast. Uh, we are going to learn from those examples and bring the best practices here to solve the problems we need to solve. Okay, thank you, Vaughn. Um, we've had some uh, emailed question about. Um, individual engagement with the property owners on the East Bank, the folks that own land on the East Bank. Um, Lucy, did you want to address that? Sure. Well, you know, engaging the individual property owners is a really important component of our work. I um, mean, it is no matter where, where we're working in the city. Um, we tend to focus on that public framework that really sets the stage for future growth. So the public uh, parks and greenways, the public road standards, the bulk standards that sort of um, create the look and feel of a space. And so um, all of the properties on the riverfront in this study area already participate in a policy. They already participate in that open space framework. And so we're really gonna look and focus on that of particular interest here are asset owners like TDOT, uh, which is different, you know, how we engage the bridges, how we make those important parts of the design of the city. And so there's an enormous amount of opportunity here and we're not just focusing on one sort of individual property owner. I think we need to look holistically at, at, um, at the entire study area. And I think Vaughn just said, something really important, which is that context matters and understanding the relationship of the East Bank to KC and how those relate as well as to the areas in River North and to the South and of course across the river where we're having an important conversation about Second Avenue and First and the West portion of the bank. Those may not be expressly in the study area, but understanding those relationships is part of what we need to accomplish here. And I think that flows nicely into um, Eric Hoke's question um, about uh, what is kind of colloquially called Spaghetti Junction, but the Ellington Fifth James Robertson Parkway um, as a part of this uh, planning process um, and whether that's something that um, is still kind of on the table or being considered as part of this. Um, I don't know if I wonder if Mark is Mark Sturdivant on. I wonder if he might address um, sort of how how we work with TDOT and sort of how um, how how that type of a of a question would be investigated in a in a project like this. Sure, uh, this is Mark. It's nice to be on with everybody tonight and. Um, we, we uh, are going to look at actually the interstate corridor uh, really from Trinity Lane down to the river and all the components of it. TDOT's very interested in this project as well. And so I think it's kind of unanimous uh, amongst the people on this project that we want to look at that area that you mentioned that you referred to as Spaghetti Junction. So I don't know what the solution is going to be, but it's certainly something that uh, we want to take a look at. So. The answer is yes. <laughs> is spaghetti junction a term of art? Is that an engineering term? Well, it's got lots of names, but um, yeah. <laughs> that, that's what not all printable, right? <laughs> all right. Thank you. Um, 
So I think this one, another good question for um, the Perkins Eastman team um, from Connor. What do you see as the biggest challenges presented by the current built environment on the riverfront in achieving a satisfactory outcome? Well, I can um, jump in a little bit. I mean, there, there's a lot of very unique things. You know, there's a lot of infrastructure. You know, there's the rail that goes by. There are several uh, bridges and viaducts. Um, we know that shoreline, you know, there's a lot of fluctuation. There's flooding. <clears throat> we have to anticipate, uh, you know, the changing climate. That's going to factor in because, you know, we're, our, this plan really and this vision really should be, uh, you know, it's really the, the framework for the next 50 years, right? Plus, you know, and so we want to make sure that we're prepared for the future. Um, I think I will say one thing, though, is the challenge is um, this is going to sound a little bit like a cliche, but, you know, we really see all of those as opportunities. And I think Juan would agree that the most boring project that we could do as designers are one that have no problems because the problems, you know, um, they're in, you know, creatively solving the problems, you know, really hatches the, the real opportunities that are unique. And so all that, those combinations of different factors in the East Bank are what's going to make this, you know, special and, and, and uh, different from anywhere else. Yeah, I would just add to what Eric said, you know, that all the infrastructure that's there is is sort of standalone infrastructure. They just operate sort of as umbilical cords uh, of streets connecting. Um, and they need to be a little bit more well behaved and more well integrated into what we do if we're going to create a truly walkable, beautiful neighborhood. Um, but there are lots of clues there already. I think the bridge building and how the bridge building meets the edge of the river and the dock down to the waterfront is a really beautiful and unique moment of infrastructure that's there. The building engages the bridge on the upper level. So there are lots of clues as to what Nashvillians have done to make that infrastructure more well behaved and more integrated. So, you know, we're just going to take those lessons and we're going to you know, run with them and, and try to make that uh, those umbilical cords of roadways much more well behaved and fully integrated, I think. Okay, and I think I'm gonna, I think we have time for maybe a couple more and then I just have one more slide um, on uh, next steps and kind of what, what to be looking for upcoming. Um, and then um, everyone can, can go about their evenings. Um, we really appreciate you all joining us tonight. Um, let me scroll through very quickly. Um, I know that we've had some questions on um, equity um, and inclusion, so I just want to try to get get there so that I ask them as they were written. Um, Anna, while you're looking, I saw yeah. uh, some some questions about affordable housing specifically and. Okay. Um, just while you're looking on the equity question, um, and it's kind of hard to scroll through some of these Q and A's, but I would just say we understand how important housing is and how how important affordable housing is to a long term vision and figuring out what that right um, sort of balances of uses. And so we have a market analysis that's going to be underlying much of our work. We're partnering with MDHA, and we are planning to have a strategy that looks at that piece on, on, the, on the housing front. I mean, part of what we're trying to accomplish here is a physical organization of the site. And then beyond that, there will be development proposals where we can review what the mix of um, sort of programs and housing and the like might be for those individual sites. And so I think part of the challenge and something we're certainly going to work with the community on is, is understanding how to establish those goals for housing, including affordable housing within this planning process, but then also making sure that we're working with individual developments as they come through, because there are different opportunities with both. And so um, uh, I, we understand how important that is, and NDHA is a partner um, with us on this project, and we look forward to tapping into their expertise as well. So Anna, did I buy you a little time on the to find the there? I, I saw an equity question, but then I can't open it. So um, I'm, yes, I, I'm I, feeling I, confident with the Q and A stuff. So the the scrolling of the Q and A is is a little tricky tonight. Um, but I found the question, and it ties into a, a question that um, was emailed in also. Um, 
So the uh, Emily's question was, can you share from previous similar projects how you prioritize racial and economic equity into your process, but most of all uh, into the outcome? Um, and that ties into a question we got about um, how will the East Bank study improve the daily lives of the community residents um, in which it resides? So um, I'm not sure if that's a, a Deb or Ed question or a Eric or Vaughn, but um, if you could talk a little bit about racial and economic equity in your work, that would be great. Yeah, well, absolutely. I'll, I'll start off. Um, I think, you know, again, having been here in Nashville for all of my life, but also professionally for the past decade, um, it's been a big part of what we've done, whether it be from the implementation phase and going forward, making sure that there are diversity initiatives and plans or more so um, in this similar fashion where we're talking to our community and making sure that we are reflective of our entire community, right? Having diverse opinions, uh, just being very being very intentional. Um, I know a lot of times people think that there's organically ways to communicate with people and that you'll get the feedback you need, but that's typically not the case. Um, and so having worked in communities that are historically black or historically immigrant based, uh, we have to make sure that we take culture and the history of certain areas into account and make sure that we start conversations, not necessarily where we are today, uh, but 50, 60, 100 years um, in arrears and just work to understand why people are where they are. I think people appreciate that. I think, again, it, it happens on a grassroots level, um, you know, allowing people to speak for themselves. Um, you can't always have those conversations with a representative as much as we love our representatives. Um, and so really just being um, very careful, uh, very intentional, and very um, thoughtful in how we approach individuals in that space and making sure that they're empowered, right? So as much as we engage, we have to educate. And so they're bringing a lot to the table from their own personal experiences. Um, it's up to us to bring a lot to the table so that they're able to understand what we're doing in our processes and so they can really add the type of value that we want them to by, by being involved with us in a way that Sometimes we have to we have to we have to bring a little bit more um, background information to processes because there has not been that level of involvement in planning exercises and engagement of this scale. Um, but we know that going into it, and that's and that's the and that's part of why we feel like we have a really good team here now because we we know that that's something that's going to happen, and we've been discussing it um, really as soon as we were putting our team together. Um, and I know I know Deb and I are very aware of a lot of the challenges that our city is facing in that space, but we've also put together um, a group that is particularly focused around civic and social justice issues. And so we're gonna be having very in-depth conversations with those groups of representatives um, and, that are really gonna keep us accountable and keep us, uh, you know, making sure that those conversations are at the forefront, just as much as everything that we talk about in the built environment in the physical space. Well, you answered it so well, I don't think I need to answer it any further. So who else wants to comment? I'd like to just add one thing, and that did, you know, really beautifully kind of talk about how our process would be structured and how we approach the process to make sure that all the voices are heard. Um, but, you know, just to follow up on something that I mentioned earlier is that um, I think that's part and parcel. Your question is part and parcel with our emphasis on the public realm. There's so two parts to that with regard to our approach. Um, so the, you know, because the, the public realm, the parks, again, parks, streets, and so forth, those are what's for everybody. They're accessible to everybody. Um, they're open to everybody. And it's, you know, they're, they're, they're public, you know, by their definition. And then the second thing is, you know, access. And we want to make sure that <clears throat> those, you know, connections that, you know, Lucy and Anna mentioned earlier, are present so people can can get here and the ways of getting here are not exclusive are not just tilted to one side and side or the other but you know we're 360 degrees and everyone can get here and enjoy the citywide resources the neighborhood resources and so forth so. Thank you, Eric and Ed, for that. Anna, I, I want to add one little thing. Yeah, um, yeah. I want to credit the mayor's office in the transportation plan for coming up for the equity by design tool that is part of the transportation plan, which gives us a blueprint. There's not a there's not a pan of, you know a, a one solve one cent solution, but there that includes a toolkit that can help guide us. 
So I, um, I think that will be one aspect of, of how we think through those issues. Absolutely. Thank you, Lucy. So I know that we are just passing 730. I want to just share one last uh, slide um, to wrap us up, which is um, on our next steps after this. Um, thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, I appreciate you taking the time out to engage in the questions. I hope that um, despite its flaws this evening has given you a chance to um, get to know some of the team that's been that's going to be working on this study and um, you'll be seeing our faces a lot. Um, I hope you can tell that we're passionate and excited and want to do well and the right thing by Nashville. Um, so in terms of upcoming events, um, Probably the next large uh, public event will be in July. Um, we're kind of calling it a design charrette, but it will be um, a week long uh, time of um, visioning and engaging and getting a little bit more into the details of um, what's going to be feasible for the East Bank. Um, and so we'll have plenty of um, promotion about that upcoming. But um, if you're around in the summertime, we hope at that point to be able to offer a, a lot of in-person um, engagements. Um, and I'm just highlighting that as kind of our next big big event. Um, as Devin had mentioned, there'll be um, anywhere they're allowed to be to talk about the East Bank. Um, and so um, please uh, reach out to to us um, with our email address, eastbankinfo at nashville.gov, or um, keep checking the website, eastbankstudy.nashville.gov, um, where we'll have the recording of this meeting and um, other information as we go along. Um, but we're, we're all in this for the long haul and there's plenty of opportunities to engage. Um, so thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, please follow up if there are questions. We will make note of any questions we didn't get to and try to follow up with you. Uh, we're able to save um, all that we um, received in the Q&A panel. Um, so thank you again for your time and I, I hope to see you again on an East Bank meeting. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.